all you FTCers, welcome to the show that not only rewards the knowledge that's inside that head, but occasionally lets you write a silly poem to become rich and famous. <laughs> As always, I'm your host, It's Never Late, feeling great, so let's not hesitate, because boy oh boy, do we have a doozy of a challenge for you this week. But before we do, let me explain the concepts, the rules, and the format. The idea behind the show is kid driven. I've worked as a teacher in some form or another for about a decade, from California to Vermont and a lot of places in between. I've talked with my current students and old students, and they all said they wish that they had a little bit more fun stuff to do during the quarantine. So my teacher friends and I came up with the idea of a Friday trivia show that rewards kids for a hard week of digital school. So let me get my graphics guy to bring up the graphic. Today we have 10 questions in 10 different categories. All these categories listed here with 10 very different answers. Your job is to answer as many as you can and to have a good time while you do it and laugh along the way. You can submit your answers to me at the email address listed below to see if you win. So what do you win? Well, let's show them what the prize is. Boy, oh, is it a blizzard out there today? Who saw this one coming? Not me. So your prize this week has to do with this lady right here. Right here. Her name is Marlene, and no, you do not get to win Marlene, but you do get to give her a last name. Um, she's looking to get a good last name, so please think of a good one for her, and let's go back into the studio. Hope you can win that prize this week. So now you know the big prize. Ooh, and it's a good one. So I say let's get to the trivia. Your first question is in geography, and it will be asked by yours truly. The U.S. currently has 50 states. I wonder if there's ever going to be a 51st state. Hmm. That'd be neat to see. The biggest and the second youngest state is Alaska. Entering the U.S. in 1959, a few months before Hawaii. The smallest state is, you guessed it, Rhode Island. The oldest state, well, that's Delaware. Anyhow, enough facts for your geography question this week. I'm going to show you three pictures of three different states. Without any words, it's just going to be the outline. You need to name the state. All right, let's bring up that first state. What is this state? Number two. What is that state? And the third and final state. What is that state? Oh, sorry, taking a little bit of a soup break. Let's go to Miss Hernandez for question two. Hi, everyone. I'm Miss Hernandez, and I'm here to read you your current event question. Hardship and pain can bring the best in people. There have been so many reports of people doing amazing things over the last month, from moms delivering free lunches to doctors, to teenagers delivering groceries to elderly neighbors, and vacuum companies giving out thousands of free ventilators. Working together and kindness can certainly move mountains. Your question is, what has become a worldwide symbol of hope and unity against the coronavirus? We see kids drawing this symbol in windows and we see it on flags in New York. This symbol has become support for our doctors and nurses and a reminder to our neighbors that better days are coming. Thanks, Ms. Hernandez, that was great. Awesome, so for our next question, we're gonna do a question about nature knowledge. And I figured who better to teach about nature knowledge than Bigfoot. So let's go check out what Bigfoot has for you. There's all kinds of wild animals that live near you, no matter where you live. In the United States, there are 432 or 433 species of mammals and over 800 species of birds. I think spring is the best time to inspect the outdoors to see if some of these animal friends or evidence of their existence. Up on the screen, there are four pictures of animals that come from the US. I'm going to play two different animal noises and you have to tell me which of these animals made the noise. Here's the first sound. Here's the second sound. Bye.
Thanks, Bigfoot. That was a great nature knowledge question. You know, it was actually surprisingly easy to get Bigfoot on camera. All you need to do is send a nice email. Huh? You know what that sound means, right? Yeah, time for sports and games. All right, sports fans. So today, I got a pretty fun sports question for you. You may know that the world's most popular sport is soccer, with 4 billion fans worldwide. But there are plenty of obscure and weird sports, like this sport called chess boxing, where competitors alternate between rounds of chess and boxing. You can win with either a knockout or a checkmate. Or this sport called cheese rolling, where athletes race a nine pound round of cheese down a very, very steep hill. So your question this week is, name the sport pictured here. Points will be given if you get it right or if you give an extremely hilarious answer. Whew. Woo-wee, that was a good one. Here you go. Thanks. Anyhow, let's go over to Julie Peachtree for your history question this week. Mm. Excuse me. Hi there, my name is Julie, and I'm here to ask you a history question. Now don't worry, you're not gonna need to run to the bookshelf and pull out the history book because this question is about your family's history. So everybody has a family, and we use the symbol of the, of the tree as a tool to remember our ancestors. My question for you is tell us the name of one of your eight great-grandparents. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Huh, I could have sworn I had a great-grandmother named Edith. Uh-oh, Mom, I gotta go. Hey, uh, sorry about that. Anyhow, uh, let's get to an entertaining question. For this week, question number seven, we have Miss Granados asking the entertainment question. Let's check it out. Hey, I know you're ready for your entertainment question, but just hold on. I'm almost done reading. I'm trying to finish my 35 minutes of daily reading. Okay, this week's entertainment question comes from the video game world. Which video game console has been sold out for weeks because Animal Crossing is such a hit? Hmm. Tell me what you think. I need to get back to reading. The next question is a math question. And I know it's math, but at least it has a chicken in it, right? Anyhow, I recorded this math question yesterday while we didn't have any snow on the ground. So let's, let's cut to that clip. All right, y'all. Howdy, how's it going? I'm out here with Larry Bird, and we're gonna ask you your math question for the week. The average chicken weighs five eggs a week. I wanna know how many eggs Larry Bird is gonna lay in a year. And I'm gonna give you guys a few numbers that might be helpful. There are 52 weeks in a year, and there are 365 days in a year. All right, happy mathing. Thanks, Larry. Say hi to all your friends. Woo, we're getting close to the end. All right, your next category is books. Now, reading has been one of my favorite activities over the last few weeks. Books make me laugh, ha ha ha, cry. But more than anything, they transport me to new worlds and faraway lands. It's nice to be able to do that while in my own house. So, this week, for your book trivia question, I'm gonna read a quote from a book, and you need to tell me the author and the title of the book. P.S. This one's one of my favorites. Unless someone like you cares an awful lot, nothing's gonna get better. It's not. It's time to break out those dancing shoes because we got a music question for you. Question number nine. Good morning, Irish. It's time for music trivia. This is Mr. Nick out in Vermont, Brownie Points, if you know where that state is. I'm helping Mr. Mays with his trivia game. Your job, if you choose to accept it, is to name the song and the singer for what I'm about to perform. I've been on my own for long enough. Maybe you can show me how to love. Maybe I'm going through withdrawals. You didn't even have to do too much. I'm crying. Since it is cold and empty, 
No one's around to judge me. I can see clearly when you're blinded by the light. No, I can't sleep until I feel your touch. I'm driving in the night. No, when I'm like this, you're the one I trust. Ooh, that was a doozy. Good luck with this week. See you in a bit. Yeah, I'm going to be dancing to that song for days, for the whole weekend. Can't wait. Thanks, Nick. All right. You know what this means. Wild card question. Question number 10. We got Taylor from Pennsylvania phoning this one in, and it's a good one. Good luck. Stay until I say so. Okay, Misha, come. Oh, hey guys, my name's Taylor. I'm a friend of Dave's. I'm a teacher in Pennsylvania. I teach middle school. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking we could write some haikus together. Um, so haikus are a form of poetry. And I actually use these haikus to do dog training. So Misha only knows how to do dog training using haikus. Um, so you guys are going to help me out. Now, a haiku is a Japanese form of poetry. It has three lines total. So they're pretty short, just three lines. Um, but you can say a lot in those three lines. And each line has some different rules it follows. So the first line is five syllables. The second line is seven syllables total. And the third line is five syllables again. So those are your three lines. Um, when I was training Misha just now, I was actually using a haiku to train him. So the first thing I said was, Misha, can you sit? So if you count the syllables, syllables you've got Misha, can you, Misha, can you sit? It's tricky sometimes, right? So some words have two syllables, some have one. But that first line was five. Misha, can you sit? The second thing I said was, now stay until I say so. So we've got, now stay until I say so. Seven. And the last thing I said was, okay, Misha, come. So that's, okay, Misha, come. So we've got five, seven, five. So for this Friday, you guys are going to help me by writing some of your own haikus. Um, now, they don't have to be about dog training. Um, Misha would just enjoy some other haikus because he can only communicate in haikus. Um, so if you guys can write some great haikus for Misha, uh, that'd make him really happy. And then Mr. Peachtree is going to share some of Misha's favorite haikus next week. Um, so that's what you guys are going to be doing today. Just help me out. Now you know the rules. It's your turn to make haikus. Misha, can you spin? look forward to reading all your awesome haikus. That does it. First episode of the Friday Trivia Challenge is over. Ten questions down. It was good, though. So here's the deal. All the important information. Here's what you need to do. Right here, that's the email address. That's my email address. I need you to send your answers to that email address, and I need them sent to me before Monday. You have the weekend to finish them. You don't have a lot of time because there's going to be another episode coming out, and I want to get all those answers graded. So get them into me ASAP. Awesome. One final thing, too. I want to thank all the teachers that read those questions this week for you guys. They love you a lot, and we miss you guys a lot. That's why we're making the show for you. Anyhow, it was a great week. We'll see you next week. All right, let's roll those credits.